everyone, Romy Reviews here. This is, technically we'll call this a Romy Report because this, I found this very interesting. Taylor Swift. I know we don't talk about her too much on my channel, but this is about the music business more so than her. So let's talk about how she's no longer with uh, Big Machine, which was the music label that signed her uh, you know, since 2006. So she's been with them ever since what she was 14 years old, something of the sorts. And now is the time for her to move on to um, Universal Music Group, more so the Republic arm of Universal Music Group here in the US. And I just thought a couple of things of note. Taylor Swift didn't own her masters. I don't know why. I thought she did because you know she talks about uh, uh, talks about creatives owning their stuff and getting fair payment. But now it makes even more sense. If it's like if I don't even own the stuff, then I definitely want fair payment. One of her conditions to signing with Republic um, was that she now uh, not only does she own her masters. She, well, a lot of people don't know with Spotify, you know, the music streaming service, uh, a lot of companies, record companies, they paid into that. They also get paid from it, but they also paid into that. So they had ownership in that. When it went public, they all planned to sell their shares. And she negotiated where I think Spotify already said that they were doing something of the sorts, but maybe the terms weren't finalized, that they're going to give back their proceeds because again like i said record labels just say this is what they're going to do um, give their proceeds back to the artist um, to the engineers to the writers t instead of just you know distributing it to regular shareholders or of the sorts and i thought okay cool um so again taylor swift she's all about the creative so that's one thing i can say about her that's been very consistent i don't care what the reasons behind that are as far as her championing for that but it does help other people so i appreciate that uh just some stats about her in general oh, reputation which you know it's always fun you can kind of tell when an artist is move is about to move on to another label from their the last album that they get to the label reputation was very different than all of her other albums before and so now it makes sense knowing that that was her last um album obligation to big machine but this begs a bigger question of so taylor swift was signed to Big Machine for all of this time. And from what I'm reading here, this is based on Billboard. So thank you, Billboard.com. This is where I got the article. I'll have the link in the more info box. Um, but they were saying that Big Machine, uh, they didn't want to go and negotiate with Taylor regarding, they're willing to just pay her outright. No problem, you know, potentially. But the issue was her previous catalog, her back end. Um, Taylor wanted her previous uh, music, album, singles, the masters to those. But Big Machine, from what I'm reading here, said, no, 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 no. That's where the money really is. As you know, in entertainment, it really, the money really is in the, in the catalog. Like even for, for YouTube, I make more money off of the videos that I've done in the past than big videos that get a bunch of views. It, that's just how it is. It's a numbers game. Um, and so Big Machine didn't want to part with their real revenue stream, which is her back end catalog. So if this is correct, this is essentially saying that she had to look elsewhere because at this point, what was this four or five albums in? Uh, millions upon millions sold and not owning the music only having a small stake in it yeah that mm, I'd feel a certain way too and of course United Music Group which has the likes of Drake's and you know people like Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj of course they want to add someone like Taylor Swift especially since Taylor Swift slowly becoming more and more pop whatever pop is nowadays um, it's actually a good fit it makes me wonder. I, I just hope that the record label, I'm sure budgets are secure for everyone, whatever their budget is, it's secure. that's not the issue. My question is what happens when it comes time to, you know, promoting 
um, at radio and all of that. But then again, record labels make sure that they don't compete against each other. This could actually be very beneficial for some of the other artists there because they know when other people are putting out music. That's why you don't see certain big name artists put out music around the same time. In hip hop, they almost don't care. But for them, because they're also not signed to each other. But for a lot of the other like pop acts or other they are all under the same labels so they know oh okay so and so's gonna put out an album soon okay we'll wait until the following month so that would be nice and we know taylor has already hinted that she's gonna put out a new album you know to christen and seal the deal type of thing so i wouldn't be surprised if she goes and puts something out towards um towards the end of the year there's still time and christmas sales oh christmas sales she may be going for that um but that's interesting because Ariana is also possibly putting out a new album this year. I would rather her wait until like the beginning of next year, but that's just my opinion. Um, start the next year right with new music. That would be great. Billboard also discusses, um, it talks about how depending on Taylor Swift's portion of her previous label, Big Machines, U.S. sales and streams activity, they're saying, for example, 21% um, of the label's total sales and streams for 2016 was because of Taylor, um, up to like 56% that she had in 2015. In 2017, she comprised of 41% and so on and so forth. And it looks like maybe for this year, it's like 34%. So she's definitely still plays a big, huge part for that label. But again, this also includes reputation. So all of her previous albums, they're going to be still making a mint off of, which makes sense why they're open to having her leave. I mean, we know how it is with labels. We've worked with you for a long period of time. We've gotten this and that from you. You're entering the next stage. And maybe it's also just not the right fit for what they're playing to do and what they want. You never know. It is a more so like pop country um, label and platform. And if Taylor is veering away from that, then maybe she does need to go to a label that's more traditional pop um, like a universal music group. Um, you see what they've able to also aided in doing for Drake and like I said for Nicki and for Ariana. Their music seals the deal, but having that label support is everything. Uh, but I just found it really interesting that this that they were open enough to, you know, her her deal with the label was done. So it was just a matter of re-signing. And like I said. I wonder what goes through their mind, what numbers they play around with to kind of see, hmm, is it more beneficial if we give her the bag and give her equity? Like, it, it sounds like they were probably open to allowing her to, going forward, have full control of her music as far as the masters, but they just didn't want to give up that back catalog. Allegedly. Huh. Hmm. That's my question for you guys. Would you have... Uh, if you were the record label, if you know anything about that stuff, would you have given Taylor Swift, you know, her masters? Or do you feel like, look, we did this for you. Yeah, you might have sealed the deal, but we did all this, this and that. And the least that we could do to recoup the money that we spent was to keep the back catalog. Anything you do going forward. I mean, this is the deal that you originally signed. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um. Uh, I just don't know why I thought Taylor Swift owned her masters. I don't know why. Because, I mean, because she came in as a new artist, so it made sense that she wouldn't. But I just felt like if anyone did already, then she would have. You know, Rihanna owns her masters. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Beyonce owns her masters to her current music. Because she has a partnership deal with Sony, but not necessarily them just owning it and she gets revenue from it i think it's actually the opposite she owns it and they and she puts it through parkwood and they distribute it so and she still sells she still sells so hmm, hmm this is definitely a power move um we'll see what direction this means for taylor swift now because again also pop music is different than what it was when she was you know popular with country and then slowly crossing over so what type of album are we gonna get um 
But yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about that because I just thought it was interesting. Thought it was interesting. Some more quick stats. Um, in 2008, her album Fearless sold 7.2 million copies. Um, in general, she sold over 32 million copies here in the U.S. Um, so, so yeah, I guess for a record label, we're thinking, look, we've done a lot and we've collaborated a lot. And maybe it's, hmm, hmm. Hmm. I wonder, because her fan base is very strong. It's cult-like, but sh her numbers are large. So that's why I don't call it cult-like, because it's not like sh her core fan base is just, you know, modest. It's huge. It's huge. It's larger than some big artists, you know, full entire fan bases when they have the song going and their album's actually good and people are really supporting even people that don't normally support it. So I don't know. I'm sure they did the numbers and figured, look, we have new artists that we can help compensate. But I'm also hearing that her previous record label, Big Machine, may be, uh, they may be anticipating a sale. So if it gets sold to another company, possibly a competitor, um, you know, Universal Music Group, then it could make sense why they were willing to let go of Taylor Swift, but keep you know, a certain revenue stream going. You see what I'm saying? So that they could still leverage up the company as far as this is what the sales will consistently look like because they can go. Now, another thing that I heard was that, I should say read, was that um, some of the music though, because of, I guess, the way how it came to be, her team would have to sign off on it. So that's where I'm just thinking maybe... They just did this so that I could say, hey, we have Taylor Swift, you know, one of the top selling artists of this generation. Um, we have her back catalog by our company, get access to that. And you never know who may be interested in that. And also the other country artists that do well as far as sales. So I just wanted to go. That wasn't so quick as far as me talking, but let me know what you think. Do you think they made the right choice? Obviously, Taylor Swift made the right choice, especially if she's continuing on into a more traditional pop lane, which we're still redefining what that looks like. Um, people like Ariana Grande has figured it out, but some of the other pop people that we're used to, they haven't, not so much. But yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, and thank you. Remember to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe and come back.